So today I want to talk about the Expert Inverter. It is an extremely popular inverter in South Africa, um, but in some cases it's actually being used incorrectly, or it is used correctly, but it is suboptimal. And I want to discuss the limitations of the Expert Inverter with you today, so that you understand what they are and how you can overcome them. The inverter is made by a company called Voltronics in China. Um, and in South Africa, it's mostly sold as a Mercer, but you can probably buy it under at least 10 other brand names. Uh, from a reliability point of view, it is one of the electrical slash electronic devices that probably impresses me the most. And by that I mean including any German product that will probably claim that they are a lot better. These things are extremely reliable. Um, as a backup system, I think they are better than most German and European products that you actually get. Um, I abuse mine and it keeps on working. And my wife abuses it because she simply doesn't know that she is busy abusing it. It has really two functions. It can act as a solar PV system, which means that it can take power from solar panels, um, as well as it can be a backup system. So it provides all that functionality. If you go to the Voltronics website, they're very clear about it, that this is intended to be an off-grid inverter. But because it's so cost-effective, people use it in on-grid situations, in South Africa quite a lot. Now if you're only using it as a backup system then uh, that is of no consequence. But as soon as you actually add PV power to it then there are a couple of things that you should be aware of. So let's first look at um, how people would connect electrical devices to the inverter. I've shown a group of devices here notably the geyser, stove, anything that heats in the kitchen and generally in the house. Things that heat in the kitchen are things like a kettle, a toaster, microwave. They use a lot of power. Then there's things like air conditioners and there's a pool pump. The common characteristics of all of this is that they use a lot of power. But if you don't have them available for a few hours, you can actually live with it. The geyser will stay hot. The stove, um, well, hopefully you've got a gas or a braai outside. So you can make food or you can eat raw food if you're into that way inclined. The air conditioner, okay, you know, that might be a bit of an inconvenience if, you know, you feel like that. Pool pump can run later on. So generally, you know, need these devices all of the time. If you go to these, Things like lights in the evening is really an inconvenience. Most people would like their TV to work and fridges defrost, for example. So these are devices that use little power, but it is really convenient to have them available all the time. So what you would do is if you consider the backup functionality of this inverter, is you'll connect these things so that they are backed up and you'll connect these devices before the inverter so that if the power goes off then you lose power to these. To complete the functionality you would now add the PV panels to it which means that you can now make use of PV power as well as your electricity coming from the municipality or ESCOM I'll just refer to it as ESCOM power so let's look at the limitations of this architecture. The first thing you should know about the expert is that this is strictly an input and that is strictly an output. So power only flows from left to right through the inverter. Now let's look at the implication that that has for your PV. If your PV power comes in here, it can only feed this side. So if you have more power available there than you need here, this additional power cannot flow in this direction. 
By example, let's say you need a kilowatt there. You've got two kilowatt available there and your geyser is on. That needs two kilowatt or three kilowatt, depending what geyser you have. So the PV panels will actually provide power there, but the power required by the geyser won't come from there. It will actually come from your electricity supply. And although there's additional power available here and it's free, it will not be utilized. So there you actually lose out on free power. The second limitation you should be aware of is that it switches between power sources. The impact of that is, let's say you need two kilowatt here. You've got one kilowatt available from the panel, so you don't have enough. Then instead of mixing power from there and there, the inverter will say, OK, you haven't got enough power there, so I'm going to switch back to the grid which means that that power is being ignored and you're using grid power. Now, people will tell you immediately that depends on the state of charge of the battery. And yes, it's true, but I said I'm going to ignore the complexity added by the batteries in this discussion. Um, now, what you can do is you can say, OK, if this part only flows in that direction, why don't you take the geyser and put it on this side? Yes, you can do that. But remember you had limitations on both sides of the scale. You said that if there's more power there, then it cannot feed this. If there's too little power here, then you ignore everything from there in any case and you switch back to the grid. So if you take your geysers and you put it there, the geyser is a good example because it's an automated device, now your geyser comes on, you don't have enough power available here. So what happens now is that you switch back to the grid. And the probability of switching back to the grid now increases, which is when you ignore all of that power in any case. So that's not the ideal solution. So what is the ideal solution? You take your PV panels and you don't connect it to this inverter which means that you are wasting the PV functionality. And then you take your panels and you connect it to a grid tide inverter. A grid tide inverter has got three characteristics specifically, which I want to discuss. First of all, remember we said power flows through this inverter and it can only go in there and it can only come out there. In this case, you have power flowing here and then you T into your electricity. The fact that you're teeing in there means it can fly in that direction and it can fly in this direction. The first characteristic I want to discuss is if this goes off, your inverter goes off. So you are not going to kill the Eskom guy working on the pole. Just get that out of your mind. It is by law. There is no inverter in the world that will actually do that. So stop thinking that you're the first one in the world that thinks about it. You're at least number one billion that thinks of that problem. The second characteristic that I want to discuss here is that if this inverter has got power available from the panels, it will draw the maximum available from the panels and it will push it in here and it will push harder than Eskom to make sure that you use its power first and then if you need additional power then you will take Eskom power. There is a mechanism to make sure that you don't push power back into the grid and I'm not talking about not killing the guy um, I'm talking about the electricity is on there's not an Eskom guy working on your pole but now you simply have excess power available here. By law, you can't push that into a grid. And with most municipalities, they will actually charge you for power that you push back into the grid. It is a thing uh, that is being discussed quite a lot. And hopefully that will change in the future. Because essentially what municipalities and Eskom is telling us at the moment is there's free power available or they can give you very little for it. And they're saying to you, thank you, we don't want it. 
Okay. For that, these inverters have a functionality which implies that you measure the electricity flowing there. And if the electricity goes in that direction, then this inverter will actually cut back. Um, and it will make sure that that never goes um, less than zero, or if you want to call it that, the electricity will never flow into the grid. Okay. So let's look at an example of how this system will behave. If we need one kilowatt there, and we need two kilowatt there, and there's one and a half kilowatt available from the panel, what is going to happen? First of all, the inverter is going to take that one and a half kilowatt. It's going to push it out here. And it's going to push it into your electricity. And remember, I said it is going to push harder than Eskom to make sure that it's one and a half kilowatt is used first. Because you need two kilowatt there and one kilowatt there, you need three kilowatt flying down there. So the other one and a half kilowatt will come from your electricity supply. So you can now see that this is a mix rather than a switching over process. Whatever you've got there, you're going to use, and the rest you're going to get from there. Then that 3 kilowatt is going to supply all of these devices. Okay, and it's going to supply all of these devices. So now you have a situation where this PV panel or PV panels can supply both these blocks of electricity consumers. Secondly, if your power fails, what happens then? Remember we said if the power fails, this switches off. Okay. So now you don't have power available to your geysers in your stove anymore. And you only have a requirement for one kilowatt. And now your batteries will supply that power. But because of this arrangement, the batteries will not waste its power on the geysers or the pool pump, which can run later. It will only supply power to this side, which means that you need a smaller battery system and you can supply power to these crucial things for longer. So this is the ideal situation to minimize the amount of batteries that you need and to maximize the power consumption of the power utilization from your PV panels. As I've mentioned in other videos, if you want to contact me, those are my contact details in South Africa. Um, if you want to ask me anything, give me a call and let's chat about it. And uh, if you want to know something about a specific topic, let me know and then we can make a, a video about that. Thank you very much.